So this is the start of something new. Skyblock is a complex game to navigate, and without the tutorial or story that most MMOs offer, I think a lot of players find it difficult to find their way in this vast, unfamiliar world. And that's the purpose of this new series, to show how a more experienced player would progress a character on a brand new profile. It won't show you the correct or most efficient way to play, because in my opinion, if you're having fun, you're playing the game properly. That and I don't always do things in the most efficient way. But if you're new to the game or just trying to find a Skyblock series to watch, hopefully you'll be able to learn something new from this. So my very first goal on this character is to unlock the bazaar at level 7. Not only will it make gaining resources for crafting easier, but it's a great way to make some money on the side early on. I don't know the most efficient way to hit level 7, because levels weren't a thing when I was, you know, in this stage of the game. I would assume the fastest way to get to level 7 would just be to level up really easy skills like farming. And this is pretty true, because this early on in the game, skills are really easy to level. Just a few minutes of farming wheat in the hub can get your farming skill in the double digits. And this is great, because upon hitting farming 5, a farming island called the Mushroom Desert is unlocked. I want you to guess what skill we're gonna level in the Mushroom Desert. If you guessed farming, you're stupid. The Mushroom Desert is the best island to gain mining XP early on. With an efficiency 2 golden shovel, you can insta mine the sand on this island, which is how I hit mining level 10 in just a couple minutes. And there's mining 10. I think we gained almost an entire level just from mining sand. Okay, so I think the next skill up on the list is probably just going to be foraging. I do want to see how much is a jungle axe right now. The Jungle Axe is a great investment because it lets us break multiple logs at once and really speeds up the process of leveling up foraging. Oh, look at this sucker. <laughs> with most of the easy skills at level 10, I decided to head into the deep caverns with nothing but iron armor and an undead sword that I bought from the weaponsmith. I wanted to mine enough of each ore in the caverns to reach collection milestone 1, which unlocks recipes for minions. Are they mad? Oh, no, they're not mad. They're not mad. They have no idea I'm robbing them blind. Oh, no, they're mad. Okay. I did gain some XP by crafting minions from all of the wood and ores I had collected thus far. So it is now the second day of the profile. Ooh, gift. Yesterday, I said I wanted to get some redstone minions set up so that we can start working on redstone collection for our accessory bag. And I didn't do that. So that is definitely something that I want to do today. But the first thing that I actually want to do is buy this armadillo pet. The armadillo pet sucks. There's really no reason for us to really have it because it doesn't do much. But the reason I wanted to buy it is because we now have our very first pet. And the moment we unlock our very first pet, we can start leveling up our taming skill. So there's this bot on my Discord server and there's a command that you can actually input and it'll tell you the cheapest and easiest skyblock XP for you at your current state of the game. I ran the command and I realized that you can actually buy a bunch of these weapons and what we can do with these weapons is actually just donate them to the museum for free skyblock XP basically. The museum is a place in skyblock where you can donate different armors, weapons, and items which binds the item to your profile. In return, however, you are granted XP for each unique item that is donated. Weapons, and we have here the Wither Bow, Spider Sword, and Sword, and that should probably get us over level 5. There we go. Access to the Garden. Okay, this might actually be huge. I, I thought the Garden unlocked at level 2. 10 but apparently unlocks at level 5. The garden is a second private island that is designed specifically for farming. You can set up different plots for various crops as well as serve guests and compete in farming contests. And I have a feeling we're going to be spending a lot of time here throughout the course of this profile. Her dialogue is actually so slow. So look, I set up some minions. My level 1 redstone minion. Level 1 diamond minion. Let's go to the garden. Oh, I went ahead and completed the opening questline of the garden, which consisted of purchasing and cleaning up my first plot. I love how the very first goal of this profile is to hit the bazaar, and I'm not recording when I accidentally hit level 7, unlocking the bazaar. And there's our first 1 million coins in the bank. And it took maybe like 10 minutes of actual work. Let me put you guys on something. There's a really good reason why I prioritize unlocking the bazaar first on this profile. For one, being able to buy resources in bulk will save us a lot of time and a lot of effort moving forward. But also, flipping items on the bazaar is one of the easiest ways to make money, and at this point, it's probably the best money-making method that we could be doing. When I first unlocked the bazaar last night, I had about maybe 100,000 coins, and I decided to invest most of it into stuff like 
carrots, and potatoes. Common items that have a lot of volume like crops are really good investments to make because you can easily like double or even triple your coins with every flip. Like you can see here, the sell price of a potato is 1.6 and then the buy price is 4.2. So every potato is 2.6 coins of profit. Buy and sell orders for these also fill almost instantly because there's always people that are gonna be insta-buying and insta-selling crops. They're also one of the safest investments to make and it's really hard to lose money unless you do something stupid. Okay, this is the same Discord bot that I mentioned earlier in the video. I'm currently tracking potato prices in, over the last 24 hours. And you can see here, you could have bought potatoes at the highest possible sell price at 3 coins per, and you could have sold them at the lowest buy price at 4 coins per, and you still would profit 1 coin per potato. It's literally impossible to lose your money. <laughs> This is just a disclaimer that uh, I'm not giving out financial advice. If you somehow lose money doing bizarre flipping, that is uh, not to my fault. All of this is also super low effort. All I did was log on every once in a while to collect coins and set up orders. Maybe 20 seconds of work and I was making at least 150k off each order of potatoes or carrots. Okay, with our redstone and our oak wood to collect, we now have two million coins total and i think i'm gonna leave a million in the bazaar just so i can have some money flowing at all time it's the persistent pursuit of the bag um but the other million i think we can finally start spending on some upgrades i already put in a couple buy orders for enchanted redstone and redstone because like i said earlier i really want to get started on the redstone collection because that's going to allow us to hold more talismans in our accessory bag and that's a big reason why i prioritize the bazaar so much because with it we can just buy all of the resources that we need to get the minion set up on our island instead of having to mine the ores ourselves. Okay, now we can start moving on to the fun upgrades, which is going to be armor and weapons. And I already know I'm going to be buying a set of Glacite. You know, we spent about 90k on this full set and it has no requirements and actually gives us over 400 defense total. Normally in terms of weapons, I'd probably go with something like the Raider's Axe, but I think something that costs just as much if not less and actually has more damage and more strength is the endstone stored and that's probably going to be our new primary weapon with our armor and weapon enchanted i think we're ready for our next step with my trusty armadillo pet who is still kind of useless to us but that's okay he's he's trying his best before i do that though there is one thing that i want to buy and this thing completely carried me during my very first playthrough three years ago and that is the grappling hook Oh, I have missed this item. I haven't used it in years. I know that with our current funds, we can obviously buy an aspect of the end, but we don't even have a lot of mana to really use it with. So it is kind of useless to us. And the aspect of the end is a really special item that we'll probably use for the entirety of this profile. So I do want to see if I can craft it on my own instead of just buying it from the auction house, which means we're probably going to have to grind out 25,000 ender pearls. I'm back with the things you want. Here's your gold and your lapis. And we have unlocked the Dwarven Mines. I'm here for one reason, and one reason only, and that's to level up combat. My combat right now is three. My net worth on this profile is almost two million and I'm combat three. And the reason I wanted to level up combat in here is because of these ice walkers. You can actually one shot them as long as you're using a pickaxe. And this is probably how I'm gonna intend to hit combat 12 because that's when we're gonna unlock the end. And then we can do more combat leveling once we're actually in the end, but right now we can't even enter the island. I just died of fall damage. That is literally the first death of the profile and I died of fall damage. Um, um, let's go combat 12 and now we can enter the end and I do very very little damage to these guys yeah we're probably gonna need to get stronger one of our final goals for this video is to complete the quest line on the end island which consists of obtaining all eight pieces of the end set and fetching the dragon shortbow for the lone adventurer but I needed to be much stronger to survive 
I decided I'd do that by filling up my accessory bag, since accessories are one of the best ways to increase damage output. Okay, so we're going to be using the same bot that we've been using all the video to determine which accessories to get first, because if you do slash missing, it actually tells you every single accessory that you're missing in order from cheapest to most expensive. So we can run down this list and buy the cheapest ones first. And I'm going to try to see if I can fill up this accessory bag full of accessories and then go back to the end and see how we do. Now we should have a full accessory bag and a lot less coins. I ended up just buying any accessories that I couldn't craft myself from the auction house, which is why we now only have 1.3 million coins left in the bank. It is all going to be worth it when I one-shot this Enderman, but only when I crit. Oh, we're so close. The armor and necklace didn't take me too long since they can just drop from the weakest endermen, and I dropped the gauntlet at the same time just by mining endstone nodes in between killing endermen. The rest of the pieces were a bit more difficult since the end belt drops from obsidian defenders and the cloak and dragon shortbow drop from watchers, both mobs that reside in the dragon's nest. But with my ender armor stats doubled, it didn't end up being too hard. Look at the drip guys. Look at the drip. Full set of ender armor and ender equipment. I remember on my first profile, my first set of dragon armor was unstable dragon, but I feel like we are balling enough to the point where I think we can just completely skip unstable dragon armor and go right to strong dragon armor. And a full set of strong dragon armor is gonna cost us 2.6 million coins. And right now we have 1.3, okay. We got some work to do. It took a couple of hours, but all of our buy offers for strong dragon fragments have finally filled, which means we should have all 240 fragments that we need to craft the full set. So we'll start here with the chest plate, helmet, leggings, and finally the boots. All right, let's put fierce on the entire set. 5.8k damage with the end armor. 6.1k. I just spent almost 3 million coins on 400 damage. So I just did some optimizations, reforged my equipment, and then properly reforged my sword. And now we have 97% crit chance doing 7.3k a hit. Everything we've done so far in this episode accumulates into our final goal, to defeat a dragon. But this wasn't something that I was strong enough to do alone, so I called up a few guild members and had them help me summon a dragon. My guild consists almost entirely of endgame players, and I was definitely the weakest member of our party. But even though I was doing practically no damage to the dragon, I was having fun. I think that's something we often forget. Video games aren't always about being the strongest or doing things in the most efficient way. It's a lot more simple than that. At their core, video games are just about one thing. Having a good time. I'd like to take a moment now to thank Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Honkai is a free-to-play cross-platform RPG available on PC, mobile, and PS5 that boasts more than 30 charming characters and an intuitive combat system. With a semi-open world experience filled with puzzles, treasures, and stories to uncover, Honkai has an endless amount of content for any type of player. The 1.6 update also introduces Ron May, an ice-type support character and Dr. Ratio. Yes. That's his name, who excels at buffing himself while weakening opponents. If you log on to Honkai Star Rail on or after January 17th, you can even receive one copy of Dr. Ratio. And this is the only time Honkai has given out a limited 5-star character, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Both of these limited time 5-star heroes can be drawn now with 10 free Star Rail special passes that you can claim now just by logging on for 7 days. Use the link and redemption code to download the game and redeem 50 free Stellar Jade. Thanks again to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring today's video.